Hey guys, just got this battery in for review. This is a 48 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery from Sun Gold Power. This is a rack mount battery and it's another one that comes in a 3U form factor. It's fairly new to the market. I think it's been out for about a month or two now. Uh, this is one of two server rack batteries we'll be taking a look at here in the month of June. So we're going to run through the usual review process here today. We'll take a look at the features of the battery. We'll do a capacity test and then we'll tear it down to see how it's built inside. So this battery measures 17 and 3 8 inch in width, 18 and 1 8 inch in depth, and just five and one quarter inches in height. As I mentioned, this is a three U, that's three server rack units sized battery. And it weighs in at approximately 95 pounds. Taking a look at the left hand side of the battery here, we have our two front facing handles. They are collapsible, which is pretty nice. We have a positive terminal, which has a protective plastic covering and consists of two screws. One thing about these terminals though, is that they are facing the outward direction of the battery. So you would have to connect your cables like you see here. You can't connect them up and down. We have a Chint DZ158-125 circuit breaker. It's a 125 amp circuit breaker. The front of it does not give a DC rating. It says 230 volts, 50 hertz, which is AC. However, I did find a data sheet for it online. And while the data sheet does not explicitly state that it's a DC rated breaker, it does give an interrupt rating for 60 volts DC. So that leads me to believe that this can handle DC correctly. Additionally, this breaker actually appears to be UL listed. Now I don't see that UL marking stamped anywhere on this breaker, but that is an interesting thing to keep in mind. Moving to the right hand side here, we have an on off indicator. We have a reset switch, a series of dip switches for your addressing. That's gonna be for your communications, run LED, alarm LED, and we have a six LED state of charge indicator. We have a dry contact relay, and we have a series of communication ports for RS-485, CAN, RS-232, and two more RS-485s. So we have our display here, we have our second collapsible handle, and we have our negative battery terminal. And then this menu is pretty much the same options we have on all of these batteries. We can go to analog info here, we can see the batteries at 48 volts currently. Um, go down to cell capacity. You can see it's at 0% state of charge. I've already completed the discharge test on this. And then if we go down to cell voltages, we can see the voltages of all 16 cells here. On the top of the battery, we have a specification sticker. And this is something I do like seeing because not all of the batteries we have reviewed have this. So this is a 51.2 volt nominal battery. It's rated for 100 amp hours, 5120 watt hours. Has a maximum charge and discharge of 100 amps continuous. The maximum charge voltage is 57.6, which is actually a bit low. So it's not taking it all the way up to 3.65 volts per cell. Including with our battery, we have a small RJ45 patch cable. That's going to be for the communications daisy chaining. We have a connector block for the dry contact relay port. We also have some cage nuts for your rack and then some screws to secure the battery down. And then we also have a user's manual. And uh, from this, we can see that the standard discharge current is 50 amps, which would be a 0.5 C rate. It's rated for uh, 7,000 or more cycles at an 80% depth of discharge. Uh, we have an interesting block diagram of the BMS logical design. That's something I've not seen before. And we also have details on all of the factory programmed BMS settings. We have pinouts for the RS-232, RS-485, and the CAN communications ports. A detailed troubleshooting matrix based on all of the LEDs available on the front of the device. And that's about all we have to see in the manual. To get this battery charged up, I use the usual Ames 48 volt lithium iron phosphate battery charger. It's been running overnight and I left it connected. So hopefully it's done a little bit of balancing. The front display is showing 99.8% state of charge and 99.8 amp hours of remaining capacity. And we can see it only has one cycle count on the display. For the discharge test, I have a standard uh, 48 volt, 1500 watt inverter that is going through a Batrium shunt, which is metering the amount of current using a Batrium BMS to report the data to this display. Here we can see voltage, amperage, wattage, amp hours, and discharged uh, watt hours. My test load is going out to the battery shed. It's a 48 volt battery charger charging up my SOK battery bank. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch on the inverter and switch on the circuit breaker of the battery. So we are discharging this battery at approximately 1.31 kilowatts. Uh, we'll come back when this test is completed and see what our discharge capacity is. All right, the BMS in this battery has shut down our test and we came in at 101.95 amp hours. 
All right, there we go. Uh, now the bottom of the lid here does have some epoxy board on for insulation, that's good to see. I do notice there's a little bit of white residue on the tops of these batteries here. I hope that's not like moisture or something. All right, so there are some plastic covers on each one of these batteries and they are uh, individually serial numbered here. And it looks like they are individually QC tested as well. And here is the first look at our batteries. I was fully expecting these to be the same GFB cells that we've been seeing in all of these rack batteries pretty much, but these are actually different and it's fun to see something different. All right, now there's a lot going on here, so let's try to unpack what we're looking at. First of all, this is a 51.2 volt battery, so I'm being extremely careful not to touch any of these exposed metal surfaces because that can actually shock you. So we see this small red wire coming off here. This is going to be the positive power supply to the BMS, so we can go ahead and disconnect that safely. On the left-hand side of the battery here, we have two larger conductors coming off. Uh, this red one is the main positive, obviously. It's a six gauge silicone insulated wire. The batteries are all laser welded together. They look like very nicely done laser welds, you can see there. The bus bars between the cells are pieces of aluminum, and we can see the positive and negative are held down directly to those bus bars with serrated flange nuts. So as we progress to the right side of the battery, these cells are all arranged in series. On the rightmost side, we have a number six conductor jumping from the first pack back to the second row of batteries. And then we proceed on with our series connections until we get all the way to the left where our main positive is located. These conductors running up the center of the battery are going to be our balance leads. They are terminated with some ring terminals and screwed into the aluminum bus bars. They are nicely bundled straight down the center of the battery pack. And I see they actually have them zip tied in a few points to the plastic separators between the cells. Additionally, I see we have one, two, three, four different temperature sensors. The temperature sensors are fixed to the battery and they're all located between the battery and the bus bar. Here is a closer look at the QR code of the battery. It's not one that I particularly recognize. I've not seen this QR code before. Uh, so I'll be sure to look that up and if I can figure out what these cells are, I'll insert that information here. And taking a look at how the two packs are assembled, we have these plastic insulators between each of the cells. These cells are then banded together with some plastic or nylon strap and that is banding them together pretty tight. Um, just holding them in place to help prevent them from expanding during the natural charge and discharge cycles. We have two packs built the same way. You can see the first pack there and you can see the second pack in the back. And those battery packs are each held down to the steel frame with a series of screws on both the left and the right. Taking a close look at the sides of the cells here, they all do appear to be perfectly straight. I don't see any bloating, expanding, or anything that looks of concern. On the right hand side of the battery here, we have our balance leads coming up from each battery pack and going into the BMS. On the left side of the BMS, we have the negative coming off the battery into the BMS. They are using these 90 degree ring terminals. Um, I do like seeing those in some applications, but I'm not quite sure how I feel about them in this particular application because when this battery is closed, they are somewhat close to pressing against the actual battery. Now there is still a little bit of space in there but you can see where they've naturally been bent from pressing against that battery. We then see two inductors here, which is most likely for the current limiting. Then we have our negative coming off the BMS and going over to our main negative terminal. Again, our positive conductor is a number six wire coming off the main positive. It's going into the circuit breaker. It then exits the circuit breaker and goes to the main positive terminal. Now this BMS board is multiple layers here. I do believe this top board to be exclusively for current limiting. We do have a large heatsink on the top here with several uh, FETs or transistors, um, but I also see a larger heatsink down underneath here where my finger is with significantly more FET transistors. Um, so that is most likely for the charge and discharge control. This is a fairly similar BMS to what we have seen before. I do believe it to be a PACE BMS brand. I don't see their name. Oh, here it is. It is a PACE BMS. And the model number is SST21-447-3.2. And again, this is where the balance leads in the temperature sensors are entering in the BMS. We can see a series of very tiny transistors down here and very tiny resistors. So if it senses one of these cells is over voltage or however the BMS is programmed, one of those transistors is going to turn on and it's then going to use those resistors to bleed off some of the power from the battery. That is known as passive balancing. I do see there is a coin cell battery over here and I had somebody ask in a prior video what that is for and I haven't quite figured that out yet. 
So if anybody knows what this battery is actually for, please do let me know. I'm hoping that this battery is not going to prevent this BMS from working because this battery as a whole will likely long outlive uh, the performance of this button cell here. Everything else looks pretty much as we would expect it within this BMS. I don't really want to take it apart any further. We've done that enough times, I think, with some of these batteries. Um, this ribbon cable and these small black leads are the links between the top BMS board and the board of connectors and communication pins on the front. So that's a third board below the stack of boards. This connector and these conductors here are going to the front facing display. All right, so the last test that everybody wants to see is we're going to make sure the low temperature charge protection is working. So I've got a clamp meter here, I've got my Ames uh, charger connected, and I've got one of the temperature sensors pulled off. Going to turn on the Ames charger and spray this temperature sensor with some freeze spray. Uh, that is just a can of computer duster. Um, and we're going to make sure that once this sensor gets cold, the charging does turn off. All right, so you can see we are charging at approximately six amps over here. And the charging has turned off in a matter of seconds. So next I'm gonna warm that sensor back up and just make sure it resumes as we would expect. All right, and the charging has turned back on. We're charging at six amps again. All right, so there we go. The Sun Gold Power 48 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Um, I don't have anything negative to say about this battery. It functions and works exactly as we would expect. I did try to research the QR codes on these cells a little bit and I could not find any information on them anywhere. So I don't know what brand they are, what model they are. Out of all that, the only thing I noted as a potential improvement is the way the 90 degree lugs are positioned coming off of the BMS. Not a deal breaker, really. Oh, and one more thing that just came to mind on that is I don't think I personally like the left and right facing terminals on the front. Uh, and the reason for that is the way I'm building my system is I have two batteries laid out next to each other and having that terminal design is going to prevent me from being able to set these batteries one next to the other. Now these are designed to be in a rack, but I don't think everybody's going to use them in a rack. Some people might purchase one or two. And looking at my referrals, I typically see individual battery sales. I don't see people buying entire racks yet at least. Now the last thing to touch on before we go is the price. These batteries are currently at $1,402, making them one of the cheapest options available currently. And that does include free shipping. And it actually does not ship freight. So this actually shipped through normal ground transportation services. I can't remember if it was FedEx or UPS, but, and I think it allows for an all around cheaper experience, at least if you're buying one battery. That may change a little bit if you're buying multiples. Now, I also cannot guarantee the price is going to stay at $1,402. Uh, it's currently the 4th of July and there are some sales going on. I don't know if that's playing into their pricing. I do see it's listed as 15% off and I do see they're discounting it for Prime Day, which is an Amazon thing, even though this is not for sale on Amazon. Uh, so once those holidays and events are over, the price on this may change, but as of the time of this video, on the 4th of July, it's listed at $1,402. Anyway, if you have any questions or comments, please do let me know. Don't forget to check out our new Twitter page. I will leave a link down in the video description. Hit that like button before you go, and thanks for watching.